Do you think you're ever going to do any more acting, or are you just sticking to stand-up now? Man, I got this weird idea. I want to go to Africa and do some of these Nollywood movies. I've been watching them. And this, this, I was telling Naomi about it on her podcast, but it's the same thing I'm talking about with these Cuban docs, how people can solve problems with so little resources. This is what these African directors are like. The yeah. movies look crazy. But it's funny how crazy they look. But it's also awe-inspiring because I can't believe this guy with no resources solved a complicated filmmaking problem with this type of ingenuity because they had to. But what if somebody had a, a reputable American star to apply these tricks to? I'll come with the funny. You just give, <laughs> you give me that look, baby. Don't you worry. It's all going to work out. Like I want to I wanna do that. I want to just see what's popping over there. Africa's popping right now. Do you have an idea of a script or an outline of a story? I don't know that I need one. You got to <laughs> see one of these movies <laughs> to know what I'm talking about. But it's just something about it makes me feel like joyful when I watch it. Someone is just, I don't know. I just want to try some shit. Tell you what, Africa's taking over in the UFC right now. Are they really? <sighs> three African champions and they're three arguably the best of all time. What countries do you know? Cameroon, that's, that's, this Francis is the guy you were telling me about. He Ngano, would, yes. He would, yes. They kept trying to get him in games. Yes. He fled the country. Yep, he, yep. He found a way to train. That yeah, was he, a great story. It's a crazy story. He got, they kept catching him when he was trying to get into Morocco or from Morocco to Spain. To Spain, yeah. And they kept sending him back to the Sahara Desert. Oh, wow. To die. That's what, they just drop you off of the desert. Like, good luck. And he made it back seven fucking times and finally made it across to Spain. They put him in jail in Spain for two months, which they do when you get over there. And then finally they released him. He was homeless in France, slept in a parking lot, made his way to a gym. And they, he wanted to be a boxer. And they're like, man, you should try MMA. And they, he was like, I want to be a boxer. And they, but they paid him 500 bucks to fight. So he's like, okay, I'll do it. So wow. he beat the fuck out of some people. And now he's the heavyweight champion of the world. Oh, wow. And not just the heavyweight champion of the world. The most terrifying heavyweight champion of all time. Nice guy? Nice guy. Nice Super guy. nice guy. Super friendly. Just a sweetheart of a guy. It's terrifying in the cage. Terrifying. Just nukes people. As Joe, that's... Uh, that's oh, oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He'll get Idris Elba on the phone. Idris, I want you to fight somebody. He's such a specimen. And he just won the title, beating the greatest heavyweight of all time, Steve Miocic. He just nuked him in two rounds. What do you think of that, like a flick like that? What does he weigh? He's 265 when he gets on the scale, but he's about 270-something when he gets in the cage. He has to lose weight to make the heavyweight limit of 265 because the UFC has a heavyweight limit. And he's, without a doubt, the scariest heavyweight that the sport's ever seen because he flatlines people. How show, tall show, is he? 6'5", 6'4", 6'5". This is a big five. dude. Yeah. He's huge. See, show the video of him uh, knocking out. Oh, yeah, go to the top KO finishes. Yeah, watch this. Go full screen. He just fucking flatlines people. It's different because you can't make any mistakes with him because as soon as he touches you, boom. See, dudes just go down. As well, soon as he touches you, you just, what in the fuck just hit me? And he can do that to everybody. Uh, Fine. Yeah. Give me another one. What is the UFC ref looking for? That was, when you back up a little, that was the, where you just were, that was the Stipe fight. What is the UFC referee looking for? Yeah. Watch yeah. this one. Clearly out. Okay, yeah. that guy, yeah, he did the right thing right there. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> they, there's, that they was, fight is a beat up a dead body, wouldn't they? The thing is, guys recover. <laughs> yeah. Devastating uppercut. Uh, devastating with everything he does. And then he goes in for this. Yeah, that guy's clearly sleeping. Yeah. No one's faking sleep in the octagon, are they? No, but you know what? By the time he's throwing that shot, he doesn't know if that guy's going to get up on the way down. He's something special, man. Like, real unique. Because he's, he's just a top-of-the-food-chain specimen of an athlete. How old is this fellow? 34. Whew. That's old for a fighter, no? No, not for a heavyweight. Okay. For a heavyweight, it's a good age. Heavyweights mature later in life. Joe, the shit. If you ever wrote a book, what would it be about? Nonsense. Yes, I think I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the same. 
but every time I talk to you, I can't bring, I can't stump the band. It's anything I can talk about. You tend to know something. About I know a little bit about a lot of stupid shit. It's all useful if you got a job like this. Yeah, if you got a job like this, but it's all because of talking to so many people. But unfortunately, I forgot so much of it too, because so it's like my hard drive is just over spilling. It's like a garbage pail that's just garbage is just falling out of it. There's like too much in there. The spot.